There are thousands of beautiful churches and chapels for worship around the world, but few rival a small chapel in the heart of New Mexico. History, mystery, and beautiful architecture all meet together at the Loreto Chapel in Santa Fe. But the masterpiece of art dwells inside the chapel. It is a staircase that connects the ground floor with the choir loft. The staircase, miraculous in nature, has stunned believers and unbelievers alike due to its marvelous structure that defies the laws of physics. On the 1st of May, the church celebrates the feast of St. Joseph the Worker, recognizing the dignity and holiness of human labor. We know from the Gospels that St. Joseph was a carpenter and provider for his family. However, what some may not know is that St. Joseph provided his skillful labor to this small chapel in Santa Fe in the late 1800s. In 1852, seven courageous sisters left the secure and civilized state of Kentucky under the request of Bishop Jean Baptiste Lamy. The sisters belonged to the order of the Little Society of the Friends of Mary under the Cross of Jesus, which was privileged to be the first order of sisters created in the United States of America. The house where they originally resided was named as Little Loreto, in honor of the Holy Family. Eventually, they became known as the Loreto Sisters. The dramatic sequence of events all started when Bishop Lamy, a French-American, brought the architect Antonin from Paris to build his cathedral. As an architect, he had been involved in the renovation of Sun Chapel in Paris in the early 1800s. When asked by the Loreto sisters to design their chapel, he fashioned it in a beautiful Gothic style after Sun Chapel. Skilled craftsmen and artisans from France and Italy were brought to assist the qualified local builders for the bishop's cathedral. They also helped with the sisters' chapel. The entire design and craftsmanship were executed majestically but not to a large expense the sisters could not afford. With its Gothic-style architecture, the chapel certainly would have stood out among the small adobe homes at that time. Unfortunately, the architect died before access to the choir loft was built. Given the height of the loft at 22 feet above the ground level and the small size of the chapel, a staircase would have taken too much floor space, thereby reducing the seating capacity to an unacceptably small level. Mother Magdalene, who was the superior at that time, called in many carpenters to try to build a stairway, but only to hear the dreadful words, it can't be done, mother, due to the complexity of the work. Since they were ladies of great faith, Mother Magdalene, together with her sisters, decided to entrust their difficulty to the great patron of the Catholic Church, Saint Joseph. A nine-day novena to Saint Joseph began asking for his gracious intervention. The sisters, in many occasions, had received wonderful graces due to the powerful patronage of Saint Joseph. But little did they realize on this occasion how Divine Providence was planning to glorify the Holy Patriarch. On the ninth and final day of the Novena, there appeared at the convent a decent grey-haired and bearded man with a donkey and a tool chest, a carpenter who had offered to build the needed staircase. He was promptly hired and proceeded to start the work. One would not pay a craftsman until after the job was completed. Mother Magdalene wrote she didn't even ask the name of the mysterious carpenter. During these times, it was considered immodest for the sisters and the girls to carry on a conversation with a male laborer. They just remembered that only the tools he had were a hammer, a saw and a T-square. And he worked during more than six months. When the work was completed, Mother Magdalene went to pay him, but he had vanished. She went to the local lumber yard to pay at least for the wood, but they knew nothing of the matter there. Besides the puzzling situation, the sisters through the eyes of faith ascertained the mysterious carpenter as Saint Joseph himself. 
The winding stairway that St. Joseph left for the sisters and their students is a masterpiece of beauty and wonder. It makes two complete 360 degrees turns. There is no supporting pole up the center as most circular stairways have, which means that it hangs without support and the weight is transferred solely on the base. Until now, no consensus among engineers have reached to give any scientific explanation of this fact. The short pieces of wood, 3 to 5 feet in length, were put together only with hundreds of square wooden pegs, used with great precision and exceptional craftsmanship. There are no nails, screws, nor glue. The assembled structure is compromised of approximately 93 pieces of wood divided amongst 10 for the outside stringer and 8 for the inside stringer, as well as 33 steps and 33 risers. The perfection of the stringer's curves is baffling. The wood is spliced along the sides of the stringers and each piece is perfectly curved. Another mystery of the staircase was the type of wood used. Though the trees have been constantly walked on and were used daily by the sisters and children for over 100 years, nonetheless, only the edges show signs of wear. The wood also appears not to be native to the state of New Mexico and is in fact an unknown variety. When first built, the staircase had no handrails, a feature that would not be added until seven years later. In 1996, after 15 months study and wood analysis by Forrest N. Easley, a wood technologist for 40 years, it was concluded that the wood of the staircase is of an unknown origin. It is a spruce species but of a subspecies like no other. The story of the miraculous event spread extensively among people throughout the region, prompting an increase in devotion to St. Joseph of which many came to behold the miraculous staircase. The Holy Mother Church is always cautious about making statements concerning things of supernatural nature. Though nothing definite has been pronounced about the stairway, many Catholics to this day are convinced that this was the exceptional craftsmanship of Saint Joseph himself due to the valiant prayers of the Loreto sisters. Let us end by trying to understand the message of Divine Providence in this miraculous event in the words of the Blessed Virgin Mary herself to Venerable Mary of Agrada, reported in her famous book, Mystical City of God. Our Lady states, My daughter, although you have described my spouse, Saint Joseph, as the most noble among the princes and saints of the heavenly Jerusalem, still you cannot properly manifest his eminent sanctity nor can any mortal know it fully before he arrives at the vision of the divinity. Then all will be filled with wonder and praise as the Lord will make them capable of understanding this truth. On the last day when all men shall be judged, the damned will bitterly bewail their sins which prevented them from appreciating this powerful means of salvation and availing themselves, as they easily could have, of this intercessor to gain the friendship of the just judge. The whole human race has much undervalued the privileges conceded to my blessed spouse, and they do not realize what his intercession with God is able to do. I assure you, my child, that he is a greatly favored personage in the Divine Presence and has immense power to stay the arms of Divine Vengeance. All these privileges were to be a reward for the amiable perfection of this wonderful saint and for his great virtues. For the Divine Clemency is favorably drawn forth by them and looks upon Saint Joseph with generous liberality ready to shower down marvelous mercies upon all those who avail themselves of his intercession.